once you get clear on that, um, you realize that you're blind if you don't look at what's after death. And, mm. and here is Jesus Christ, and we're saying there's a door marked death, and one by one, as you were weeping about with your parents, we all walk through it. But Jesus Christ is the one person who's come back. So just let me be clear on what I'm saying here. Yes, I'm saying please. Jesus lived and taught. He had a band of followers. He was tried in a Roman and Jewish court. He was, he was stuck up on a cross. He had a spear put through his side. He was taken off the cross. He was, con he was certified as dead. He was, he was put in a tomb. And three days later, he was walking around again. Now, here's the issue. If he got through death himself, he can get me through. So when I take funerals, and I've taken many funerals, I stand at the back of the church and I say these words at the start of the funeral. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. In other words, that's from uh, John chapter 11. In other words, Jesus says, will you trust me with your death? Mm. And, and to those viewers now, thank you for uh, tuning in. I want to say, and I want to ask you that question, will you trust Jesus Christ with your death? Or actually, are you saying that you'll trust the luck or you can handle it yourself? And if that's the case, are you really saying that you can get through death, find your way to heaven, and get yourself accepted on your own? Mm. And at this point, you'll say to me, well, Rico, you know, this is just pie in the sky when you die. No, it's not. Because of the resurrection, I'm saying Christianity has historical clothes. This is historically provable. Christ has risen. That means we will be raised and judged. Mm. Um, so please make sure that you're clear on putting your hand into Jesus' hand. Is, is, is we're so keen on life insurance, but we're very, very poor on yeah. death insurance. Well, there, there is an amazing blindness. And I, I think one of the things that happens in life, and this will be true of some viewers, you know, you, you may have a sneaking suspicion these things are true, but you've never thought them through. Mm. And Christian explored, you know, this course where you go along and ask any question you like. Week, week six of the course is about the resurrection of Jesus, but the urgent is often the enemy of the important. So um, I used to work at Hewlett Packard, and I knew I had mates, friends, who had questions here, but they, they, never, they never got to them, and, and the brevity of life says that's very foolish. Mm, mm. Um, and just to say that there are two things about the res resurrection, and th these are both in the Christian Explored course, but it is, first of all, a great warning. It says that we will be raised and judged. So there'll be some listening now and sneering. And I'm saying, no, no, the resurrection proves that you will be raised and judged. At the moment, you live as you please. But there is a checkout. And here's the issue. That's a really good thing. Because the judgment to come means that how I treat you matters to God and how you treat me matters to God and how we treat the world matters to God. Here's a, a, a book of a film many of you will have seen. It's Slumdog Millionaire. Now, everyone said it was a feel-good movie. Actually, I found it desperately sad. At one point, a little boy has his eyes burned out so that mm. he can earn more money as a blinded. singing beggar. Mm. And he's blinded, this orphan. And as I saw that, I thought to myself, there is a judgment to come. The person who, who did that, and th that was just a reflection of what is really happening in some of these um, uh, great cities, um, they'll be raised and judged. And mm. that's great. Mm. So I don't back off the judgment of God. I say it's wonderful, but the trouble is I'm going to be judged, and there are thousands of times I've slapped God in the face. Mm -hmm. So, so number one, it, it's a it's a it's a great warning. Be warned, you will be raised and judged. We may think we're through with the past, but the past isn't through with us. But secondly, it's a great hope. You know, Doug, you spoke about you know weeping at the loss of loved ones, and the reason we weep is that is that loving relationships are so hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And we love these people, and they're gone, and, 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 and who, who loves us? Who else loves us like that? And, and it's that, you know, I mean, in a sense, Freud was right when he, he, he said that, you know, the, the, the reason that the Christian faith is created is we want a father in the sky when our parents are dead because, because we miss them so much. And I mean, there, there's, uh, you understand how Freud so, concocted so, yeah, that yeah, theory because yeah. we do miss the people that loved us so much. But the resurrection says that I will see them again mm. if they've trusted in Christ because Christ came back from the dead and his resurrection body was a prototype of the one I'll get and it's all proved by the resurrection which is historically checkable. Mm. We're, we're going to get on to talk obviously about the content of Christianity Explored yeah. uh, in, in, in just a moment and delve into yeah. some of these areas of where it starts and where it leads you to. Um, but how did it come about? Uh, I, I mean how did the the thinking come about for you to, to 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 put it together and and how did you go about bringing it all together well a number of things of course these things come together yeah. but but uh, i think first of all the time at hewlett packard when i worked there before i went to get ordained and just having colleagues who i knew had questions and didn't really have a venue to ask them secondly um no question at all the contribution and example of the alpha course 
I think what Nicky Gumbel will be remembered for in Christian history at one level will be that he brought evangelism back into the church family. He said, let's do it in groups in churches. So, so the Alpha course was running. Now, I personally, um, I, I, I think the Alpha course has done a tremendous amount of good. But personally, I wanted a course that walked through a gospel mm, mm. and just presented the person of Jesus. Um, Alpha does more of a helicopter ride around the yes. Christian faith. And um, uh, uh, what it says, I think, is very helpful to people. But, um, but I wanted a course that just went through Mark's gospel. It's the mm. shortest gospel. And then people can just look at Jesus in Mark and ask any question they like. So I think it was that experience at Hewlett Packard, that experience of seeing what Alpha was doing, but thinking, well, I'd, I'd, love, a, I'd love to, here's the phrase, I'd love to let the gospel tell the gospel. So I think, I mean, this is quite arrogant, so forgive me, but I think God has given us these gospels. Mm. And if we said to God, well, how do we do evangelism? I think he'd say, why don't you go through the books I've given you about my son? Mm. So we just get the books off, and here's, here's our prayer. We pray that Jesus will walk off the pages of Scripture. Mm. Mm. Uh, but I think that's right, because, uh, I mean, uh, we, we often, I'm in the ministry that, that I'm involved in, of reaching out mm. to people in cults or cult, New Age, etc. Yeah. I often go back and say, how did Jesus do it? Because yeah, yeah. these people were around in Jesus' day. Yeah. And therefore, I think what you're saying is absolutely right, that the principles of how we are to approach people and how we are to communicate with people are there within the Gospels. Well, that's right. And, and above all, you see our message. And I guess maybe you're someone listening to this and you don't know where you are with the Christian faith. Again, thanks for listening. <laughs> but we, I want to say that primarily we are not so much concerned with truth propositions. Although I am saying to you, I think Christ rose from the dead and what do you make of that? And here's some evidence. But we're not primarily about propositions. We are primarily about meeting the person of Christ. And you meet him as he walks off the pages of Scripture. So again, w we long for people to begin to find that there's this amazing magnetism that comes as you meet Jesus and you think, you know, he knows all about me and you begin to see the Bible's got your name and address in it. So we just want people to look at the Bible for themselves because we believe that. Here's the issue, Romans 10 verse 17, that's an uh, epistle of Paul the Apostle, that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So that as I, as I look at the Bible... What happens is I begin to trust in Christ. I begin to have my eyes open to who he is and I begin to see that he's right at the center and I begin to find that a Christian faith emerges and that comes out of reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we want people to get as close to the person of Christ in the scriptures as possible. What I, what I found very helpful when we went through the course is where it starts. I mean, yeah. it, it it basically starts really with the question, who is God and, you know, yeah. what, what what is God to you? And I, I found that so helpful that it began there because a lot of the people you're inviting these days may have, or well, they may have been to Sunday school years ago or may have yeah. had absolutely no uh, basis, but th they all need to answer that question. And, and it seems to me to be the best place to start. Um, with with that, let's int basically introduce God and uh, w w with it. W w obviously, that's deliberate. Well, I mean, do it? you know it's interesting that opening question. I I spent sort of ten years pulling this material together, and this is the fifth edition it's in now. I started in ninety four, but in ninety seven I went to Chicago actually to take a wedding of a member of the church family who was a dear friend, and um, so I went over to do that, and I went to Willow Creek Church, and at that church to create their breakout groups, they, they had the question, if God was here and you could ask him any question you wanted, what would you just ask him? If. And I just thought that's a great start to a course because yes. what it does is it enables people to say, look, this is where I'm at. The mm. question you have for God, whether it's about suffering or whether it's about sex or whether it's about um, whatever it is. I mean, you know, the questions are legion, the questions people can ask. But basically that that means that we begin the course here's the issue not by lecturing people because they come in and think you're going to lecture me that's right we begin by listening yes we say well look we want to know what you're thinking and then we can well there'll be some talks but we can we can begin to as we have groups on the table we can begin to address where you are in your journey mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah the opening question i think is huge because mm. people hopefully people will come and say you know i've had that question on my mind for 20 years and i've been able to ask it in an environment that's safe and and other people have asked their questions. And, and then what happens is there's just a, a momentum that comes as, as everyone asks their questions. Mm, mm. 